this video, I'm going to share with you guys exactly how to transform desire into intention. This can be the missing key for so many people and can really help you understand more about the process of you creating what you want in your life. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you that process of how you can de transform desire into intention. And what I want to do is share with you why desire isn't such a good thing when it comes to the process. Not that it's a bad thing, but a lot of times people, it goes overboard for people because as people feel the desire more and more, they are reaffirming the lack in their own life. Now think about it like this. The only moment that exists is this moment right now. If we are saying that I want to get there and I am not there already, in the present moment we are generating the feeling of not having. There is either the feeling of having something or the feeling of not having something. Or there's the feeling of working with something and therefore generating some of the emotion of already having something. But the thing is, is in some teachings what they do with the law of attraction is they say you need to desire it. You need to really want it. You need to have a burning desire for it. Now I think in the time that a lot of those teachings were created, which was a lot of times back in like the 1930s, uh, you're looking at like uh, Think and Grow Rich, which I think is arguably one of the best books on the law of attraction, especially back in his day. However, I think it is outdated because what we're coming to understand is more about how reality works. Physics is starting to show us that the only moment that does exist is now and that there are an infinite number of parallel realities. And when we look at it from this point of view, it can transform the whole entire process. Now, of course, with this, I encourage you to try it for yourselves instead of just take my word for it. See if it really works for you. I've been practicing this over the last couple months and it has been working amazing. So that's why I'm sharing it with you now. And if you go into some of my prior videos, I may talk about how you need to increase desire. This is a de learning process for me and that's why now I'm sharing this with you. Now, the idea is that desire does absolutely nothing unless it is transformed into to intention. Now I've used this analogy before, but imagine right now I'm standing here and I have a desire to put up my hand, but I don't put up my hand, but I have a desire to do it. The desire does absolutely nothing unless I put an intention and I carry that out. So now what I could do is I could put my hand up like this because I intend to do it, not because I desire it, because I intend to do it. And then that's the missing key. You see, Desire is something that reaffirms the current resistance, whereas an intention is like bringing out a plan. An intention has the end goal in mind, but also the process in mind. And when we start to go at it from a place of intention, what we do is we also minimize the importance. Now, I've been talking about this a lot lately. I think this is one of the biggest game changers in all my teachings of the law of attraction is understanding that when we decrease the importance of something, we take it off the pedestal. So if you've ever desired to be with someone, if you ever had something that you were going after and you felt like you didn't have it already, what you may have done is been put it on a pedestal. You may have said, I don't have this, I want this, which means what we're doing is we're giving it more meaning, more importance than it really needs. The moment we give something what is called excess potential or excess importance, that's what it is. Anytime we give something excess meaning, what we create is what is called excess potential. Now this is from a book called Reality Transurfing that was uh, written a while ago by a Russian physicist. It's a little bit of a deep book. It's a little bit hard to understand, but it's really changing the way that I see the whole process. And basically the way it is, is anytime we give something excess meaning, excess potential or uh, excess importance, we put it on a pedestal. The moment we do that, forces come into play. We could think of that as energy comes into play to balance that out. And that balancing out will normally mean that it takes it away from you because it's balancing out that spectrum because there is more emotion being felt than is actually there. It's giving excess meaning. Now what this means is that if we have desire, we're putting excess importance onto whatever we want to create and we're saying that it is not here already. Therefore, those forces, metaphorically speaking, come into play to balance out that energy. So what this means is that desire is not a good thing unless desire leads to action or intention. 
Now, that's one of the ways we can dissipate desire. We can dissipate desire by taking action. The moment you start to move in the direction of what you're doing or where you want to go, the moment you start to, instead of just have the desire, you start to translate that into intention or action, what you do is you dissipate that desire. So normally people will have a desire, they may sit there, they may just keep thinking about it, but the more you think about it, the more you feel that resistance because it's a reminder that it's not here right now in the present moment. So the key to this is understanding that what we can learn to do is to dissipate the desire by taking the action, by making it more about the process. Now this also gives us the ability to look at the larger whole of what our goals are. Because most people will have a goal, and they'll have an end goal that's not here already. I wanna make uh, $150,000 a year next year. Maybe that's somebody's goal. They have that big goal, they're normally now making $40,000 a year. It's a big stretch to make that goal. Now the thing is, is because anytime they focus on that big goal, they feel the lack and resistance because it's not here already, they keep creating more desire, more of that reminder that that's not here already, and therefore they keep creating that resistance, and they keep syncing up with opportunities in their life that just aren't coming through or showing them what they want. The solution to all of this is to make a plan to look at to the process, to make it where you break down that larger goal, and you break that down into maybe something, an activity that you can do every day, an activity that you can do every month, and something that you can break it down into part of the process. And as you're focused on the process, those little pieces all add up into something big. I had a goal recently of creating a program, the Law of Attraction Accelerator program that I launched a while ago with uh, other YouTuber, that's my friends named Jessica from Your Universe. We created this pro product and it took three months to make because it was so much involved in it. And anytime I would think about everything that had to happen, it would get resistance because I'm like, oh my goodness, there's so many different modules. There's so many different things that we have to do. But instead of what we did is every day what I did is I got up to make one or two videos for YouTube and I got up to make one or two videos for the program. I did that for two or three months and then we had all of these videos that were ready for the program. We were able to modify it, edit it. Everything went very smooth because I broke it down into Everything I could do every day, something small, that added up to that. So it made it very easy. And within a month or two, we started things sped up and it got easier and easier to do. So the idea behind this is just being aware of how much desire you have and to know that desire is only really productive if you translate it into intention or into movement, taking action. That's the way that you dissipate desire. Now also realize that what you can do is understand that anything that you want, if you give it excess meaning, if you give it excess importance, you start to distance yourself from it and you can't actually connect to it. That's something else I was actually gonna talk about and if you stay till now, you're gonna get a lot of value because I totally forgot to mention this in the beginning. The goal that you have should not be to feel some type of emotion that you think is just ecstatic and it's so far outside your comfort zone. When you achieve your goals, they should feel comfortable because that's who you naturally are. That goes against the grain of what a lot of teachings will tell you because they say generate the emotion, sit there and just think about all of this energy, but it's not practical because you're not gonna sustain a level 10 energy all of the time. Your goals, when you are thinking in the moment of and in the thought process of you having those goals, those goals should feel comfortable for you. Now, you can expand out and stretch your goals, you can stretch your, uh, your comfort zone, but realize that you must see it as something that's natural for you. When I first had the desire and I had the intention to have over 100,000 YouTube subscribers on this channel, and when we hit 100,000 YouTube subscribers, I thought that it was gonna feel like this blissful, ecstatic you know, feeling. For like months, I thought this is gonna be my new state of being. Here's the thing. Once you hit it, what happens is it's just who you naturally are. I had, I realized I had 98,000 the night before when I went to bed, then I had a video that popped and all of a sudden I'm getting thousands of subscribers like every couple hours. But here's the thing, hitting 100,000 feels just about the same as 98,000. It's just in the head we give it different meaning. And even now that's like 180,000 and it shouldn't be 200,000. The idea is that it feels great, however, it's about understanding it's just comfortable. It's just a natural part of the process. I'm taking action. And because of that, that's part of it. Yeah, same with making money. If you think that when you make twenty or $30,000 a month, that that's gonna feel like this is static feeling, then you won't actually experience it because it's too far outside your comfort zone. 
You have to expand your comfort zone and know that it's comfortable for you to make 20 or 30,000 a month because that's who you naturally are. That's a natural byproduct of the value that you give. And also know that the key is to not be focusing specifically on the money. Money is a byproduct of you doing your passion and you providing value to other people. And when you approach it like that, you come at it from a much different place and people can connect to it. It's something that you're more connected to yourself. Because think about it, the goal, the heart does not understand the idea of just the money, right? You can, we can focus on, I want to make uh, for $150,000 a year, right? The analogy I used earlier. But the heart doesn't understand. It's like, what, what, what's the purpose of that? The money means something to us, but the heart doesn't really connect to it. The head does, the heart doesn't. The heart connects to us doing our passion, us connecting to other people, whatever our passion is, that's what the heart connects to. So realize you don't really want the money, you want the freedom the money gives you. You want the ability to travel and do what you love for a living. That is what you can focus on and as you focus on that, everything will begin to change. That's something I think is so powerful and if you waited and you're here at this part of the video, I think that you'll gain a ton of value from that if you start to apply it. Now the other part of this is understanding our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind runs over 90% of our life experience and that when we start to tap in and influence our subconscious mind, everything can begin to change. That's why I've created a free subconscious mind MP3. It's a meditation that you can listen to. I've been offering it to people for probably last month or two now and people have been getting great results from it. So it's something I like to uh, give you guys the option to get. I'm giving it away for absolutely free. You can download it in the description box below. I recommend you listen to it for 21 days to get the max benefit from it. And that other than that, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to like this video if you guys liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little notification here so that you guys can see the daily vids that I do. And other than that, as always, I will see you guys on the next vid. Peace, much love, and namaste.